What is up guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video we're going to be going over cam specifications and what they mean and also what camshaft might be best suited for your build. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright guys, so as you can tell, this video is a little bit different than videos that I normally do. It's not really like a vlog style video. This is going to be kind of like more like an informational video and kind of helping you guys figure out what camshaft you may want to choose for your Ford 302 or your 4.6 liter Mustang. And yes, as you guys can tell, this is not a Ford camshaft. This is just a camshaft I had laying around. It is a bad camshaft actually. It has a little bit of damage on the lobes from where it was in one of our race engines, but this is mainly for a dramatic effect. And also the distributor gears on the back side instead of the front. It's in the wrong location if you ask me. Okay guys, so going over basic camshaft specs and what they mean, we'll start out with the lift and the duration first and you know your lobe centers and stuff like that or your lobe separation actually. So basically what you have here on a camshaft is you got your main journals where the camshaft rides on the cam bearings and you have your lobes which I'm sure all of you guys have seen a camshaft before, pretty much know what they do. And as many of you may know, the lobe on the camshaft is actually what opens the valve. It pushes the lifter up, which in turn pushes the push rod, pivots the rocker arm, which opens the valve. And you have different size camshafts for different lifts, different, you know, durations and stuff, you know, depending on what you want. This camshaft here is out of a Chevy crate motor. It's a 603 crate motor, so I think the lift on it's like 510 somewhere around in there 510 515 and a little over 200 degrees of duration at 50 I think it's like 215 degrees of duration at 15 215 220 not very much anyways guys going back to the lobes of the camshaft the lobe is actually where all the action happens and of course guys here you have the peak of the camshaft which is the peak lobe as you can tell if it camera will focus it's not focusing very well but anyways but anyways guys the uh, the top of the lobe here which is the peak of the lobe this is where all your valve lift comes from and the bottom side of your cam here really doesn't do much of nothing. It just takes and keeps the lifter from falling out of the lifter hole. So mainly what we're going to be talking about is valve lift. And of course you can get pretty much any kind of valve lift you want. Whether you want really extreme high lift cam with not a lot of duration which is probably more built for boost applications and stuff like that. And speaking of valve lift guys, the maximum valve lift I think that you can do on stock heads on a uh, say an E7 head or a GT40 head is like if I ain't mistaken, it's around like 510, 515, and I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me. Don't, you know, if it's wrong, you know, let me know down in the comments below. But I think on a factory style head, a GT40 or an E7, even if you get them worked and stuff, I think the maximum lift is just over 500. So that's pretty much all we got to talk about for valve lift. Pretty much the lift of the cam is how much it actually opens the valve. Okay, so now we're going to talk about duration, and duration is a lot different than valve lift. Total valve lift is totally separate from total valve duration, which most people do valve duration, they always check it at 50, or that whenever they buy a cam, they look what the, the valve duration is at 50 thousandths instead of the advertised duration. And also the duration of the cam is actually where you get your RPM range from, like if a cam has 220 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths on the intake and exhaust side, it's more than likely going to be a lower to mid-range power cam. It's probably going to be a more torquey cam than a than a higher RPM performing camshaft. And don't get me wrong guys, you can get a E303 or something like that and put some really good heads on top of it and the camshaft is going to perform better than what the numbers say or what the advertised numbers are on your cam card because the heads just flow that good and just help the camshaft to work better. So you can actually take a smaller cam and actually perform really good with it as long as you have good heads to go with that. But anyways guys, uh, valve duration. Valve duration is how long the valve stays open. And like I said, on this cam right here, it's very small duration. It's not very, it doesn't hold the valve open very long. And on this camshaft here, the RPM range I think was is 2200 to around 6000 and in our race motors on the dyno these usually put out good power up to about 63 6400 then they start to fall off so a camshaft with a higher duration at 50 thousandths will have a higher rpm range rating say 
uh, the camshaft I used to have in my Mustang before I put the E303 in. I had a Lunati Voodoo cam that was 587 uh, intake lift, 572 exhaust with 238 degrees of duration at 50 on the intake side and 232, I'm pretty sure it's 232 on the exhaust side at 50, which isn't a gigantic cam as far as the duration goes. It's on up there. It, it performed really well. You could definitely tell it wasn't as drivable under low RPM load because it would get that, you'd get the cam buck where you'd be driving, doing 35 and it would start just jerking back and forth. So that's another reason why I switched to the E303. But I do feel like the Lunati cam made more power on the upper end because I could turn it 7,000 plus and it was still, you could still feel it just pulling. But it was because of the duration and you know the duration just helps that RPM range. Alright guys, now we're going to go over lobe separation and kind of what that factors in. And if you have a camshaft that has more like a 110 to 112, 114 lobe separation that's going to be like a, a less radical cam at an idle it's going to have more vacuum at an idle and you know it's going to probably be a lot better for a car that you're going to drive a lot if me personally if you're going to be if you're going to have something you're going to either daily drive or drive a good bit out and forth to work you know back and forth to work or you know places like that i would definitely go with something you know 110 or more in the lobe separation area just so you have that you know good drivability you don't have that low rpm cam buck that can happen because it'll be a better overall daily driver cam or something that you're just wanting some really good low to mid-range power and still performs good up top but it doesn't perform as good as something with like a 106, 108, you know, lobe separation. And cams like that with the 106 lobe separation are gonna have a really radical idle. It's not gonna have great vacuum at idle, so if you have power brakes, your power brakes probably won't work. And you can always fix that by installing a vacuum pump on your car. That way you have vacuum to, you know, of course, use your power brakes. If you have vacuum controlled uh, blend door actuators for your AC stuff and, you know, things of that nature. So. If you go with one of those cams, you're definitely probably going to have to have a vacuum pump of some sort, which isn't bad. My dad has it on his truck and it works everything just fine. But yes, if you do go with the 106 lobe separation, it is going to give you that crazy radical idle that we all love. I know I love it. I'll put up a clip of what my car used to sound like before I switched to the E303. Now it did have turn downs on it right there so the exhaust was a little loud, a little deeper. But if you couldn't tell by that, the camshaft is very radical. It, it sounds great, it performs great, but under low RPM driving it was it was a little bit hectic. It had the cam buck and most of my driving is city driving and I'm not out on the highway doing 60, 70 miles an hour. So that's one thing you guys need to factor in is if you're going to be going for a full out race style camshaft with a good set of heads or something like that. You know, something that you just want to perform and be really super fast. You know, just have tons of horsepower. Or if you just want something that's going to be really good, really reliable. Something that, you know, makes really good low end torque, mid range power. It still will have decent upper end power, but it just won't have that same upper RPM pull like a 106 uh, lobe separation cam or something with more duration. And guys, to end off this video, just be sure whenever you go to buy a camshaft, be sure to either, if you don't really know what you're looking for, be sure to call a machine shop, call somebody who knows exactly what you're gonna need, especially if you have stock heads, because like I said, I'm pretty sure these stock heads can only handle so much. And of course, on stock heads, you're definitely going to have to do upgraded valve springs. Depending on which camshaft you go with, some cams you may be able to use the stock valve springs and retainers. But if you want to get the full effect out of the camshaft, guys, I would definitely recommend upgrading the valve springs, the retainers. The valve should be okay. I definitely upgrade the rocker arm system on them. I'm not saying the, the pedestal mount rockers are bad, but if you can take and adjust your own valves and, you know, upgrade to a, a screw-in stud style, uh, rocker arm where you know you have the rocker arm that actually you can adjust it That's gonna help out a little bit too with valve frame geometry and stuff like that So guys, I hope I was able to help you out and uh, kind of understand more of what a camshaft does and what a cam What the camshaft numbers mean as far as duration lift lobe separation and all that stuff goes I really hope it helped you out and if it did guys be sure to smash that thumbs up down below I'd really appreciate it guys It does help out the channel a lot whenever you smash that like button down below and guys if you're new here Be sure to hit that notification button down below that way you 
you can stay up to date with all the videos that'll be coming out here soon. So guys, that is pretty much gonna do it for today's video. I really appreciate all you guys who have subscribed here recently and the OG subscribers who have been subscribed for a long time. I really appreciate you guys and I appreciate all the views that I've been getting. The channel's growing and it's just really exciting to see how quickly it is growing. But anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for me and until next time, we'll see you later.